everyone. Today we're going to make this amazing gold sparkle mug. So I love mugs. I always have tea on me 24 seven, especially when I'm crafting and the prettier they are and the more unusual they are, the happier that I am. So I've decided to create my own mugs as I can put whatever sayings I would like on them, appropriate or not. So join me today and we will make this gold sparkled mug on Azure's homemade goodness. All right, so for this project, you are going to need some Mod Podge, some extra fine glitter. I can't stress the importance of extra fine glitter. I love these little foamy brushes, a dry erase marker, some isopropyl alcohol, electrical tape. Um, you can use painter's tape, but I like electrical tape, and of course your mug, and some acrylic gloss finishing spray to seal it in and make sure that it's waterproof. Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna do is you really wanna clean your mug really good. I use isopropyl alcohol in my crafting for all kinds of stuff. So I always have some on hand. So you just wanna wet a paper towel and you want to clean your mug real good. I think I got this mug at Walmart for like $2, but I really, really liked the shape. Um, and that's probably how I pick my mugs is that it's the shape and it's really good. It's a good size um, for coffee and for tea, pretty much probably for tea. So I've cleaned it really, really good. So now what you wanna do is you want to use a dry erase, erase marker and you wanna put a line around the bottom of your mug as a guideline for your tape. This also ensures that you have the same distance from the bottom to the middle of the cup no matter where you are. And I'm gonna use my electrical tape as the distance that I want around my mug. So I'm just gonna hold my dry erase marker on the electrical tape and I'm gonna spin the mug all the way around to make a line as a guideline for my tape. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm gonna fill in the line a little bit, just make sure that it's nice and easy or even. And then what you wanna do is once I get this done here, you don't have to do it on the handle, but I really like to do it on the handle, so then you also need to draw a mark where you're gonna put your tape around the handle. So this one is more like eyeballing it of um, where I want the line to be around the handle. So it looks like I just dipped the mug in glitter. All right, now that that's done, we are going to place our electrical tape on the line. Um, this is a little bit harder to get off than I thought. So I'm gonna take a piece of the electrical tape and I am going to start putting it on the bottom of this line. I want the line to actually show up where the glitter would be, but we'll fix that in a minute. Now this mug tapers really quickly, so I can't just use one piece. I'm going to have to use several pieces and line them all up to make that straight line. So it's gonna take me a little bit longer. If it was a more uniform cup, I probably could only need like one or two pieces, but unfortunately, because it's so steep so quickly, I'm gonna to have to use more pieces of the electrical tape to make my line all the way around nice and even. So I feel it's really important to let you know that this step is probably the most important step. So make sure that you take your time and make sure that your line is really nice and straight and pretty. Okay, so we've put all our electrical tape around our mug, even on our handle, and we are going to clean it again. 
I know it seems like we clean it a lot, but it really makes a difference. So I'm going to take some alcohol and we are just going to wash away that dry erase marker. That was basically our line. We don't want it to be anywhere in our project. We don't want it to inhibit the glitter from sticking. So we are going to take some alcohol and make sure that it is squeaky, squeaky clean to have a really good finished product. I have done it without cleaning it and it does not stick as good and does not look as good. Okay, so we're all cleaned. So now we are going to do our first layer of three. We are going to do three layers of glitter. So I am going to put some Mod Podge in a disposable bowl. I like quick cleanup. And I am going to use one of my little foamy paintbrushes. I do have several of these and I use a new one for each layer. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of Mod Podge and I'm going to lightly coat, I can't stress lightly, the Mod Podge over the area of the mug. So what you want to avoid is you want to avoid streaks and bubbles. And what I mean by streaks is you're gonna see like a thick parts of like overlapping Mod Podge. So you really wanna to try to avoid that and just try to make it as even as you possibly can. If it's too thick in some areas, it's not going to ruin your project. Um, because there's so much glitter, you're not going to know, but it's not going to dry as good. So you just want to use a nice thin layer. Make sure you get the white area of your handle. For some reason, my camera doesn't want to focus. There we go. The white area of your handle and all over your mug in a nice even layer. And then I am going to take my glitter. I have chosen this champagne gold. Um, it's super blingy. I like blingy. And I am just going to dump it all over my mug. So if you notice, I have two pieces of paper underneath. It's printer paper and there's two pieces. And I'm gonna show you why in a second, once we're all done putting the glitter on. It's a trick that I use to be able to put all the glitter back into my container. So shake it off a little bit, tap it, all the loose glitter, add a little more in the areas. It's not a big deal. Make sure you get inside your handle. If you chose to do your handle, that's pretty important. So this is the first coat that we're putting on. Now this area over here has dried a little bit because it's such a thin coat, not a big deal. Um, just put a little bit more Mod Podge over top, some more thin coat of course, and then just sprinkle your glitter right over top. There we go, shake it off. And I shake it off just so I don't get excess glitter everywhere because you know, you get glitter enough. So that'll work for now. So that is your first coat. So my trick to putting the glitter back in is I pop the top off and I've got the two pieces of the printer paper. So I'm going to lift that one piece up that has all the glitter. I'm going to put my glitter in the middle of the second piece and then I'm just going to funnel it in. And if any of the glitter gets out, it gets it's going to get out on the second piece of paper and then you can do it again. So one, you save glitter and two, you save your house from being bombed in glitter. So... I will be back in two hours after we let this dry. Okay, we let this dry for two hours. So now we are going to put another thin coat of Mod Podge all over it and we're going to glitter it again. Remember, we're going to do three coats. So do the same thing you did before, nice and thin. All right, there we go. Totally covered with another thin coat of Mod Podge. Looks a little odd, not a big deal. Now we're just going to glitter it up like we did before. And once we're done glittering, we're gonna let it dry again two hours between each coat of glitter. All right. This is now the third coat of glitter. So we've done three coats and it has dried for two hours. So this is my third coat is done and I am going to basically Mod Podge the whole thing. It's like a sealer Mod Podge. 
So I'm going to do a thin coat of Mod Podge over the cup, and then I'm going to let it dry overnight. What's different about this last coat of Mod Podge is you want to make sure that you have not left any pooling anywhere. So that's why I'm trying to get into the bottom here and make sure it's all good. All right, so that is our coat of Mod Podge. And here it is dry in the morning. So yay, we get to take the tape off. I let it dry overnight, probably more than 12 hours. So I am going to find a good spot here on my tape and we are going to take the tape off. And you want to do this slow and precise because Mod Podge usually takes 28 days to fully cure. So it's still going to be a little bit soft. So I'm going to find this little piece right here and I'm going to pull it up just a little bit. Um, I do have an X-Acto knife that I like to use with this. Um, it's going to help me cut the area and make sure my line stays nice. The key to this is to keep your line nice. So I'm going to use the X-Acto knife and just cut a little bit of where the tape is with the glitter and the Mod Podge because it's all glued down. I don't really want to pull because I don't want to rip into the bottom line of the Mod Podge. So I'm just going to use the X-Acto knife just to cut just a little bit where the line is. Try to keep it all nice and even. That is the key when we're pulling this tape off. Okay, so you're going to pull it at a slight angle, like up towards the mouth of the cup with the pressure. Um, and that is because you don't want to pull down because you'll pull down into your line, into your Mod Podge, into your glitter line, really. So I'm just going to cut a little bit there to make it easier for the tape to lift up because, you know, we do have Mod Podge and glitter over the tape. So I'm just going to... There we go. It's going to start pulling. And when I pull, I'm pulling kind of away from the glitter line with some pressure. And it's just easily coming off. Just take your time when you do this. Use your X-Acto knife. If it lifts up a little bit on your line, just push it back down. Like I said, it does take a while for Mod Podge to cure. There we go. Pull it underneath. And we have a really actually a nice line. Now I'm going to take it off my handle. Remember, you didn't have to glitter your handle, but I just seem to something about it. So I'm just going to do the same thing that I did over there. If you have to use your X-Acto knife, do it. But you're going to, when you pull, still try to pull up away from the glitter line. That makes a world of difference. Okay, so the other reason that I have the X-Acto knife for is that if any of my glitter line has gone up, I can actually take the side, the blade side, and not cut, but just actually, because it's still a little soft, because it's not cured, push it down and make my line nice and even. So I'm gonna take my X-Acto knife, and I'm gonna go all around my glitter line of my cup, and just push down and make sure that nothing is coming up, and it's all even and pretty. All right, so what are we gonna do again? That's right, we are going to clean our cup again. I have lost how, count how many times we're doing this. However, you know, we have all this fine glitter, extra fine glitter really, and it gets stuck on the cup. So use some alcohol and then pull towards you to get the fine glitter off the cup. Okay, so I have wrapped this in press and seal. I'm going to tag the video, quick tip number one, of how to wrap unusual objects for painting, spraying, etc. So if you're unsure how to do it, please check out that video. But I have wrapped it really nice. And now I have sprayed it twice. So 
I sprayed it with acrylic gloss spray, let it dry for about an hour and a half, two hours in between, and then I did another coat. So you want to do two coats of the acrylic gloss spray and then let it dry. So this has probably been drying for about two hours after I applied the last coat. You can check by putting your finger on it and making sure it's not sticky. So I've taken this press and seal off. I love it. It's, that feels really good. It's good and dry. The press and seal kind of makes the cup a little sticky, so like you're gonna love this. So after we get the press and seal off, we're going to clean the cup again because it's super sticky from the press and seal. A little bit of alcohol and a little bit, you don't wanna use soap and water on this right now because your Mod Podge is still in those soft stages. So a little bit of alcohol and I gotta scrub just a little bit. The press and seal tends to stick and you know, you've done two coats and you've let it dry about an hour and a half, two hours in between. All right, so I chose that I'm gonna put some letters on my mug. I've already printed them out with my Cricut Joy. I will link a video for you to learn how to print them out with your Cricut Joy. I will also do an alternate video if you're interested in using like the Sharpie markers that go on porcelain. So um, I'm using transfer tape. I get this roll from Amazon for about $15. Because when you, anytime you want to transfer vinyl, you want to use transfer tape. So I've printed it out on the Cricut Joy, and I'm going to put hot on one side of my mug and mess on the other side of my mug. So I've cut my tape in half, and then I'm just going to put a piece of the transfer tape just over the letters that are hot. Then I'm going to take that other piece that I cut and I'm going to put it over the letters that say mess because one side of the cup I want to say hot and the other side I want to say hot mess because that's what I feel like I am in the morning before I have coffee or pretty much if I'm hanging out in my pajamas, I am a hot mess. So you just want to rub the letters really good on the transfer tape so that they stick. But because I want to put one set of words on one side and one side of the other, I'm going to cut it in half. I probably should have done this to start, cut it in half and use the tape, but you know, now you know. If you're using two words, cut them in half and then use the tape. So my mug is all nice and clean. That's really important when you're using vinyl letters. So you have the transfer tape on. You want to rub really hard um, and that gets the transfer tape to stick to the vinyl letters. And so that will be um, a way for you to be able to place it on your mug and be able to see. Um, sometimes you have to push down a little bit and get it started and then it'll go. And if you're having a little issue, rub, rub, rub. Um, of course, fingernails helps a little bit. I don't have many of those. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna place it on my mug. Just so you know, this is not forgiving. As soon as it goes down, that's pretty much it. So even if I didn't like how it was placed, it's going to stay. So I am just going to rub the letters hot with my finger really hard because I want them to stick to my glass or my mug when I take off the transfer tape. So just rub, 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 and make sure that the vinyl letters are stuck really, really, really well before you decide to try to remove the transfer tape. So I think that's pretty good. And I'm gonna slowly take the transfer tape off. And there we go, hot. Well, actually looks really good. I wish you could see this better. It's so shiny, the hot is shiny, the glitter on the bottom is just beautiful. So I'm gonna put mess on the other side. I'm gonna rub, rub, rub. Do the same thing that we did with hot. Rub, rub. And I'm gonna peel back the paper so that the vinyl letters stick to my transfer tape. This is one of the main reasons that I bought a Cricut, Cricut was to be able to do vinyl lettering and all kinds of stuff. And I absolutely love it. So like I said, See, not forgiving. Okay. So once it's on, it's on. So make sure that it is where you want it to be. And if it's not, it's 
it's not okay because it's it's okay because it's your mug. It's not a big deal. So I'm just gonna rub, rub, rub before I try to take off the transfer tape again. And on the second S, I have a tiny little bubble. I'm not really sure how it happened. Sometimes it does. I'm gonna take this weeding tool that I have for my Cricut and I am just going to press down and try to get that bubble out. It's a really tiny one, but it's gonna drive me crazy if I don't get it out. Plus, I don't want any water to get up under there when I finally do wash it. And I'm just gonna push. Oh, there we go, that's almost out. All right, okay, there we go. So there is your mug, your absolute glitter mug. I love this. Now I feel like I need a cappuccino machine for it. Hot mess. Have fun making your own glitter mugs. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and click to subscribe. Thanks.